Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Axoon M1, an adapter that lets you use an Android phone as an HDMI monitor, recorder, or streamer. It was launched in March 2022, cost $99 or pounds, and Axoon loaned me one for this review. This is not a sponsored video. The M1 lets you monitor the output from your main camera on the bigger and brighter screen of your phone, and that can also be positioned in any direction. It allows you to enjoy a low latency feed with all manner of shooting assistance, record, post or live stream using your phone's memory or internet connection, or simply capture menus and on-screen graphics which are useful for reviews and tutorials. You'll need a phone running Android 8 or above, and throughout this video you'll see it tested with my own Samsung Galaxy S20. Note it does not work with iOS devices, sorry about that. The market is of course packed with all manner of portable HDMI monitors and recorders, but the idea behind the M1 is that you almost certainly already have a decent screen on your phone, so why buy another and carry it around? Plus your phone includes storage that could be used for recording, a connection to the internet that could post or live stream, and an operating system that can run software that will tie it all together. Dedicated HDMI recorders like the Atmos Ninja 5 remain the best option if you want to record the highest quality video, whether that's in terms of resolution, frame rate, bit depth or codec, but they're overkill for anyone who just wants to capture a smaller file that's easier to post, maybe go live or grab some menus or simply flip a screen around to a more convenient angle. While phones can make great monitors, sadly the majority of them can't connect directly to the HDMI output on a camera. So the Axoon M1 primarily acts as an HDMI to USB converter. Now, there's already a wealth of cheap HDMI to USB adapters available at a fraction of the price that can do pretty much the same job. So Axoon has tried to make their option as convenient and easy as possible. First of all, the electronics are built into a clamp to hold your phone, with a quarter inch thread at the bottom and a cold shoe at the top for modest accessories like a small light or microphone. The clamp has a full size HDMI port on one side for connecting to your camera and a USB-C port on the other to plug into your phone. You'll typically mount the clamp onto your camera's hot shoe, but you'll need your own adapter for this. Now the M1 will happily work powered by your phone alone, but what really makes it stand out compared to other solutions is the mount for a standard Sony NPF battery on the back. This can be used to power or charge your phone, albeit at cable speeds in my tests, or even power your main camera or other accessories using the two DC outputs on the side, although you'll need to provide your own cables and of course ensure that the electrical connection is appropriate. Again, while using an NPF battery will extend your phone's battery life in operation, you don't need one for the M1 to work. The final benefit of the M1 over a cheaper adapter, or indeed using a camera's own Wi-Fi app, is the Axoon C app, which provides loads of shooting and view assistance, which I'll show you in just a moment. Third-party apps for cheaper adapters are available, and some of them are pretty good, but the Axoon app saves you from searching the Play Store for one that will work with your specific hardware. The M1 clamp itself feels fairly well built, but it is made of plastic, so it's not going to be as tough as a premium metal clamp or even the best pro monitors. The spring-loaded gripping mechanism will accommodate phones between 65 and 90mm wide, but a screw locking system could have been more secure and less prone to breakage with rough handling. Similarly, the cold shoe isn't metal, so don't mount anything too demanding on top, and the battery clip is also pretty basic, so I'd recommend using it all with care. The flip side to all this though is the M1 weighs just 75 grams, making it almost unnoticeable in your bag or even a pocket, unlike a more substantial rig or a pro monitor. So as much as I love the quality of my Atmos Ninja 5, that unit weighs closer to 650 grams when fitted with an SSD drive and battery, so I only take it out when I absolutely need it. In contrast, the M1 is so light, I'd take it everywhere. Okay, before getting started, you may be wondering why you wouldn't just use the Wi-Fi apps provided for most cameras for remote monitoring without spending a penny. To demonstrate why, I have my Galaxy S20 mounted on top of a Fujifilm X100V using a basic hot shoe adapter, and I'm also using the M1 here, but only as a phone clamp, nothing more. It's not doing any of the connectivity here. 
I'm running the Fujifilm app on my phone with a Wi-Fi connection to the camera and you can see there's a lot of lag, not to mention regular pauses and times when it freezes all together in my particular setup here. Now your mileage will almost certainly vary but in my experience most standard camera Wi-Fi apps are very laggy and also only deliver the live view in a small window. Plus they're lacking a lot of the shooting assistance that the Axoon app offers. So they're okay but not particularly sophisticated. Next let's compare that to the M1 in action, connected to my phone with a supplied USB-C cable and to the X100V using a rather long and unnecessarily long HDMI cable. Sorry, it's the only one I had to hand but a shorter one would of course be neater. Right now I'm powering the M1 with my phone alone, not with the optional battery and as you can see there's minimal lag between the live image on the camera and that that you see over the HDMI output viewed on screen. And of course it fills that screen too so it's a nice big image. I'd say it looks pretty responsive here. Oh, also note that the phone will play the camera's audio through its speaker when connected so to avoid feedback with the camera's microphones you should turn that phone volume down. For comparison, here's my Atomos Ninja 5, a dedicated pro monitor and recorder, actually showing a similar degree of latency, so a pretty good first result for the M1 in action here. The next benefit of the M1 is the ability to position the phone to face you, allowing you to frame a piece to camera or film a vlog. This is obviously invaluable for cameras like the X100V or the multitude of older Sony Alphas whose screens won't face forward. Now, again, I could do this with my Ninja, but it weighs almost 50% more than small cameras like the X100V, so it becomes really top heavy, not to mention more than doubling the weight of gear that I'd need to carry just to frame myself. The Axoon C app also provides an impressive array of shooting assistance, including a grayscale view, red, green, or blue channels, a resizable histogram or vector scope monitor, and they're pretty useful pro tools, focus peaking, a LUT preview, zebras to monitor your exposure, false color, a selection of anamorphic squeezes, the ability to display audio level meters, a wealth of framing crops from 2.35 to 1 to square 1 to 1, a choice of alignment grids, the option to display a full brightness range or a flipped image, a means by which you can grab a screenshot and the chance to load an overlay image. While a Ninja may offer more flexibility or more professional tools, there's more than enough for most people here, including myself. Then in the bottom right corner, you'll see a red button to start recording video. The M1 can record 1080p video from 24 to 60p in 8-bit H.264, while a cog icon allows you to choose from a variable bit rate or a constant rate between 2 and 20 megabits per second. At this point, regular users of, say, an Atomos Ninja 5 will already see the limitations of the M1 when it comes to recording video. There's no 4K or higher frame rates, no ProRes or RAW formats, and no 10-bit either, just 8-bit, 1080p, up to 60p, and no higher than 20 megabits per second. But this may actually still look better than you think. So here's a video I recorded in 4K 25p using the X100V on the left, that's an internal recording, and on the right is the recording made at the same time in 1080 using the M1 in its best quality 20 megabits per second rate. Obviously the 4K file from the camera itself has more detail, but the M1's recording isn't actually that bad and crucially is already now stored on my phone ready for sharing if I say wanted an online preview. Note on Fujifilm cameras, I had to set the menus to record 4K to the SD card and to output 1080 over HDMI. On my Sony cameras, I didn't need to change the HDMI output, but either way, the M1 will only record in 1080p at best. And here's a video I recorded with the M1 showing the X100V's display options, focusing performance and some menus too, which looks absolutely fine for use in tutorials or reviews. Previously I'd do this on my Ninja and have to deal with unnecessarily large files, plus again if I was attending an event I'd actually have to lug the Ninja into town. You can also exploit your phone's Wi-Fi or cellular connection to live stream using RTMP to platforms including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram or Twitch. Again you could do this direct from your phone using its own camera, but the M1 lets you broadcast with a far better quality camera system while also staying wireless or completely mobile if desired. And if you are thinking of going mobile, this is where the optional battery really comes into play, giving you much longer life. 
with an NPF pack mounted, a series of four LEDs indicate the charge remaining, while a small switch lets you decide whether you're going to use that battery to charge your phone with it or not. Although once again, I only managed to charge my phone at slower cable speeds, not fast charging speeds. Now I've actually got quite a large battery pack here, but smaller ones are available. Okay, now for my final verdict. The Axoon M1 is certainly a handy solution for anyone who'd find an external monitor or recorder useful, but who doesn't want to stretch to the cost and weight of a dedicated model, or mess around with creating their own with cheap adapters and third-party apps. Yes, you can do it yourself cheaper if you don't mind assembling a system, and there's plenty of videos showing you how to use an Android phone as an HDMI monitor. And conversely, if you do want to record in 4K or 10 bits, say if you're into grading, if you want to use frame rates above 60p or use more robust, higher bitrate codecs, then models like the Atmos Ninja 5 remain your best bet. The build quality also demands using the Axoon M1 with some care. The plastic clamp, plastic cold shoe and small controls means this isn't really a pro tool to be thrown around. But again, this is what allows it to be small and light enough that you'll never leave it at home. And it's especially well matched for smaller cameras that don't have flippy screens, just like the Fujifilm X100V. So if your camera screen doesn't face forward, if you'd like to record menus for a review or tutorial, or perhaps record or live stream from a nicer camera in a mobile environment, all without breaking the bank or unnecessarily weighing down your bag, the Axoon M1 provides an easy, convenient, lightweight and affordable solution. I'm definitely going to carry one around on trips when I'm traveling light. So do you think the M1 is right for you or would you prefer a higher end or perhaps a DIY solution? Let me know in the comments and as always if you find what I do useful, please do consider giving the video a like and my channel a follow. That's very much appreciated, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, bye bye.